Hello, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I add the next length of my prick in for my lace garter. Now, I begin with my this is my prick in without being put on card, and with this particular one, I've made marks, I've marked it to show you the repeat. Now, Generally, you should have a number of repeats on your pricking, um, unless the designer has made it completely random and different all the way through. So um, if you wanted to, before you actually make your first pricking, you could find your repeat and put lines down to show where your repeats are. So this pricking has two repeats on. So this is my uh, pricking before I put it onto card. And this is my pricking when I've put it on card. This is the piece that I've worked my first piece on. So this is my start of my lace and I've now ready to add the second piece. So where this line is will match where that line is. A word of warning, I would do this sooner than later. Now it, in theory, you could work all the way down, but then um, you're going to try and you're going to be trying to put your next prick in on with pins, bobbins, threads all in the way. So I usually leave a good inch. This actually is a little bit closer than I would have liked, but um, I got carried away. Um, and before I uh, at the end of um, this prick in, I've already cut my end. So I've put the uh, pricking on the card, covered it with my blue plastic, and I've cut along the bottom of this pricking a little bit further than where I actually um, have my repeat, because I think it's always better to work off of one pricking onto another, not to have them the other way around. So this pricking is actually going to go underneath this one. Um, I do that because I think um, if you've got your threads here and it's rubbing against a raw edge, um, it, it can maybe damage your threads. So I will always put my new prick in underneath. So you work off of one prick in onto the next. Now the benefit of having these lines here is that I cut halfway through pinholes so this has been all pricked ready to go the only thing i've got left to do now is to actually cut this end because i don't want all of that underneath that um, because i'd be working over this bit here which is it's dead dead area really so i'm going to get my scissors and when i mean cut through half of a pinhole i'm going to follow my pinhole lines and my line there and I'm going to cut you can feel it when you're cutting it because it it feels a bit like it's perforated now the reason I want to cut through my pinholes is because I want to line my pins up so I'm just chopping through and I find it easier there we go so I find it easier I can still see I don't know if you can see that I can still see part of my pinhole here and here because I've cut through half of it so the other half is on the other piece I've just cut off and I'm left with these half holes and it means then that I can actually um, I know this is on top but I'll do it underneath in a minute but I can actually then line up my pin pinholes here so I'm just going to get change my camera angle and make it a little bit closer for you. I've moved the camera a bit closer, so hopefully now you can see what I mean by half pinholes. So there's my half a pinhole, and that will line up with that pinhole. Now this is going to be a little bit awkward for me because I can't actually see what I'm doing because I'm put, I'd put my head in the way. So what I'm going to do is um, so this line here I've just cut along corresponds to this line here so what I'm going to do is aim for a um, a pinhole that is on the same of these and I always start off with the middle one so I'm going to aim for this pinhole which in theory should be that pinhole so I'm going to slightly lift my prick in and I'm going to push my pin down that pinhole then I'm going to slide my other prick in up and 
you probably won't be able to see this because it's all happening underneath but I'm actually going down the same pinhole um, in oh, hold on I think I've got my pricking up the wrong way just um, make sure it'd be a good idea to write top and bottom right okay so I'm just chopping my other end off I did wonder if it would make a, a um, a difference now the reason I know I'm upside down so I've put a pin in there and I'm going down the same one on the one on my new prick in and you can see oh now you just want to oh actually it looks like it's okay um so you want to just jiggle it around a little bit because um you want to line up these pin holes here so um and obviously you're going to have pricked it in slightly different places so um aim for the best that you can and now you can see why i've done half half a pin pin because i can see that that one there lines up with that one these ones are just slightly off just jiggling it around and then once you're happy with where it is you can push your pin all the way down so that's the first one in then i'm going to go to one each side so i'm going to go with this one so i'm going to push the pin down the top layer and straight in to the second layer then i'm going to take a third pin and do it the same on the other side so i'm going down through the top layer and down through the bottom there and that's my prick in lined up so you just want to just double check that everything lines up so i've got my rose grounds here that are lining up how's my um my zigzag line in the middle is lining up and these bits are lining up now had i gone a bit further down none of this would have matched so that's how you uh, join one prick in to the next prick in um i've got to do this three or four times to make the length that I need. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to join your garter, but I've got to go away, away and make a few inches.